WJG Sports. We journal great. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Just Like Brothers Podcast, episode 49, I believe. Yes, 49. <laughs> All right, 49 episodes of Just Like Brothers Podcast. Today, we have on a, a, one of the newest assistants for, well, actually the newest assistant for Wake Tech Community College Basketball, uh, Stephen Rexrode. Am I, have I, did I say that correct? You got it right, man. You got it. Right, man. All right, so, of course, Coach, man, um, well, actually, you know what, likely you, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. I know you like to make sure that you let people know who you are. Oh, well, my name's Lyco Baby. Uh, mostly confused with Kai Jones. Uh, I'm glad to make an appearance on this show for the 49th time. Uh, <laughs> and yes, Coach Rexro, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've had a you've had a really busy week, uh, last couple weeks or so, because you just moved to Holly Springs. Uh, you were going to get married, but things kind of, you know, everything got crazy. But just yeah. talk to us a little bit about uh, everything that's happened over the last few weeks for you, like getting the job and just a little bit on your background. Yeah. Um, so as far as getting the job, um, I had been at Barton the last about year and a half. Um, schedule wasn't working out great. It was a part-time position. Um, Coach Levency and Cl- Coach Zimmerman were amazing over there and flexible with my schedule. But if I wasn't going to be able to be there as much as I wanted to be there, I didn't feel right taking up an assistant coaching spot when there was easily going to be someone out there that could be there more than I was, um, you know, with me working in nine to five, um, along with coaching, it was just hard to get there for three thirty practices. Um, so I left in about November. Um, and since then I've been recruiting, getting ready for the new AAU season that we will see if it's going to happen. Um, but about two or three weeks ago, I was having a conversation with Juwan Baker, um, coach Bake, as everybody knows, and, um, the associate head now over at Wake Tech, um, and, you know, we know each other going way back, um, in AAU, we used to have some really good battles between Red Storm and Swish City, um, back in the day, uh, those were some great times, but, um, you know, we've stayed in contact, we always talk about recruiting together, um, and, you know, he had talked to me on behalf of Coach Wayne Wright and was like, you know, would you be interested in coming over to Wake Tech, and I was like, absolutely, it's in my backyard, um, I'd love to learn the JUCO side of things, so, I think about a week ago, um, it became official. Um, I talked to Coach Wainwright and Coach Bake, and we had a little Zoom call, and we were like, so what do we need? And Wainwright was like, you know, I, I hear you can recruit a little bit. And, you know, that's what I pride myself in doing. I, I try to know every kid that I can um, from Asheville to Wilmington. And uh, so we laid out the plan for what we needed, and I think we might have a, we might have a tweet that comes out a little bit later today. I'll let you know. Uh, but, you know, since last week, um, we'll have signed, I think, four or five guys. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've been blessed to be a part of some of the recruitment of those guys. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a wild ride over the last week. That plus moving, um, like you had mentioned, has is, is been crazy. But I'm excited to, to get in the gym with these guys as soon as possibly can. Right, man. So uh, where are you originally from? Uh, born and raised in the Triangle. Um, so I went to Green Hope High School. Um, I was the first class to go four, uh, four years through there um, and, you know, played basketball in high school and, and I had a great jump shot and I was a high IQ kid, but wasn't very highly recruited. I'm not the most athletic, never have been. Um, and so I had some D3 opportunities that I could have gone to, but decided to just go to college at the beach. So I went down to UNC Wilmington and, and enjoyed my, my college time and uh, but as soon as I was out, I had the itch to coach. I started um, doing rec league for Kerry Parks and Rec when I moved back to the area. And um, give credit to uh, two, two of my, my mentors in this business, uh, Donovan Perry and um, Julio Evans. They uh, they were running the, at the time, Swiss City Elite um, with Scooter Smith. And they brought me in to, to be a part of that. They're like, have you ever coached AAU? I was like, no, but I'd love to learn. And so... For a couple of years, I just started learning the recruiting side of things. I really focused on the X's and O's at the time and just trying to help them win. They were the ones that knew all the kids in the area and knew the college coaches. And over time, um, you know, I've built a, a large network of college coaches that I talk to on a regular basis that I bounce ideas off of that, you know, we've placed guys in their programs and, and they've um, recruited up 
um, recruited our guys over the time. So it's been really cool to learn the business now from AAU to D2 to junior college that I'm about to learn. It's it's great to collect a different you know type of information from wherever I go. Right. You know, you speak about, um, you know, deciding to go against co- going to play college basketball and going to where um, you wanted to go to school at. Yep. Uh, what was that like, you know, trying to go through that decision? And then also, what was it like when you had to let, you know, colleges know yep. that, you know, I, that that's not the path I want to go down? Yeah. Um, I wish I could act like I had a bunch of coaches that were really disappointed when I made that decision. Uh, but I... I, there, there were two, um, I want to say Methodist, uh, was one at the time and maybe Wesleyan, um, were the ones that had, had reached out to me the most. And, you know, it was, it was nice to get that attention. Um, I know good and well, they really just wanted my best friend that was on the team. Uh, but, um, you know, it was, I wasn't an amazing student. I had to work really hard to get the grades that I got. Um, and I knew, my heart of hearts that if I was having to focus on the game of basketball in college, I I wasn't going to be successful. Um, So I I decided to just go and and do the school thing and be a regular college student. And if, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be for me to be involved in basketball. And um, so, you know, I'll never lie to a kid and be like, you know, I've lived it. I've done it. I've been D1. I'm not going to give you that speech, but I know the game really, really well. I know a lot of people that know the game really, really well. Um, and I'm going to help you get where you got to go. Um, and so that's kind of the approach I've taken. Once I was at Wilmington, man, and living on living on the beach, it, it really wasn't a, it, w- it wasn't hard to live with that decision. It was pretty great. <laughs> right. So uh, you know, I, I take it the reason why you know you kind of got back, you know, you, you kind of got into coaching was um, you kind of still missed the game and still wanted to contribute to the game in a different way. For sure. I mean, I'm that competition, that competitive side never goes away. Um, and I've always had a love of basketball. So I got into, like I said, starting at the, uh, Kerry Parks and rec level and man, I, we went undefeated and won the championship my first year. And it's like, this is, yes, I want to do this more, but I want to do it more competitively. And, um, I worked with Donovan Perry, um, at the YMCA at the, at the time and he was coaching AAU and had been doing so for a while. He was back with Carolina elite, um, back when they had, uh, Montrez Harrell and let's see, I think like Cody Miller McIntyre. Um, Aaron Roundtree, I think we're all there at some point. Um, but, you know, he, he had been there and done that. Um, and he was like, come on, man, let me let me show you the ropes. And so I was his assistant and, and learned the ropes from him and Julio. And that was once I got a taste of that, and we, we went to a Reebok event um, and went to Salem. And we were playing against, um, like, Jawan Evans and uh, Gary Clark and all of them, and I was like, I'm sold. Like, this is what we got to do. And not, it didn't, it didn't hurt that we had Junior Robinson on our team and Philip Haynes. Like, we had, we had dudes. Uh, so we won a lot of games, and and they were great guys to coach. Um, so, yeah, that, that got my foot back in the door and it got the juices flowing. So I was never going to leave it. I was, I was excited to be back. That's a heck of a team. Cody Miller, McIntyre, Montrose Harrell, Aaron Roundtree. That's yeah. He, that's a heck of a squad, huh? Yeah, they were they were really good. Not I, I asked him all the time. I was like, "So where are you going to go find our next Montrez Harrell?" He's like, "Man, they don't exist anymore." I was like, "That's true." Montrez Montrez was a beast. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, but now you're you are b- before the the COVID nineteen pandemic, yeah. and you're going to be returning to AAU coaching with the Carolina Wolves. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the program and some of the standout players you've gotten to coach in previous years. For sure. Um, So when we started with the Carolina Wolves, before that we were UBA, um, United Ballers Association. That's Julio Evans' um, organization, and they've been really successful. That was where, you know, Junior Robinson, um, Philip Haynes, uh, Antonio Watson, um, I mean, a lot of dudes. um, And we were really, really good at getting guys in the right fit. Um, A lot of D2s, a lot of low majors. AJ Sanders that ended up playing at Coastal, played on that, played on that team with UBA. Um, we got approached by Coach Major that runs uh, Carolina Wolves out of South Carolina and asked if we wanted to take on their brand and, and run things in North Carolina. So we started that about four or five years ago. Um, and we had some really solid players. The best, the best team that we had was the last 17U team that I was a part of. Um, 
That was Jalen Austin, who went to Gardner Webb and then transferred to Winston Salem State. Yep. Um, let's see here, Isaac Suffren, um, that is now at Howard University. Mm-hmm. Nate Springs, who went to Ohio, is now at um, Kennesaw State. Just, just signed, so he'll yep. be there this year. Um, Jam- yep, Jamarius Hairston, um, who just committed to Lisa McCray. Um, he had been at Davidson uh, Community College. We had Jalen King, that was at Davidson Community College. Taji Moore. Um, Taji Moore might be one of the most underrated point guards in our state just because he's not scoring 25 points a game. He's at Pitt Community College. Yep. He, he runs a team and plays with more energy than any point guard I've ever coached. Um, so any college coaches, I know he's not going to be playing for me this year. and He's going to be playing against me. He's going to look good for every game except two. I'm going to lock him up when he plays way back. <laughs> but but Taji's the man, and y'all need to recruit him if you want a leader and a hard, tough-nosed uh, point guard. That's that's my guy. Um, Absolutely. Who else was on that team? Um, Hayden Mann played for played for us that year. Um, he's now playing football at Lenore Ryan. Um, uh, Malcolm Wade now at Montreal College. Um, Grayson Collins. Uh, see here, he's at Greensboro College. Um, so, you know, they're, they're all balling right now. They're all playing, playing ball somewhere in college. And that was just a really cool situation for us to have 10 guys that all went to go play college, um, straight out of high school. So that was, that was a big accomplishment for us. You know, what is it like trying to, you know, guide young men to make the right decision, you know, recruitment wise? Um, it's tough. And I, and if you asked me three years ago, I'd feel differently about it than I do now. Um, three years ago, I wanted the top players. I wanted, like, I was going after guys that were getting recruited by CP3, that were getting recruited by Team Charlotte, um, things like that. And, you know, I've I've finally made the decision, and I and I'm here to say it that if you're good enough to get a lot of playing time on a shoe circuit team, that's where you belong. That's where you need to go because if you're good enough to play mid major to high major Division One basketball. In my opinion, you should be playing on one of the shoe circuits because that's where the vast majority of those coaches are, and that's where they want to see you competing against other guys that they're recruiting. That's where you stand out. Um, now, there's there's exceptions to that rule that you know guys will, that play for non-sponsored teams they go high major and are successful that way, but that's not the rule. Um, there's exceptions to every rule. So so when you want to pull out like uh, Josiah James that went to Tennessee that played for TMP for for his entire AAU career. He's not the rule. He's not the one that you point to and say, but look what he did. He's the exception. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had lots of guys come through our door. And I've, I've had lots of guys that I've said, you know what, man, I'd love to coach you, but you should probably go take that opportunity to get loaded or somewhere else. Um, Justin Wright uh, was, a, was another one, man. I would have killed to coach him. Um, but at the end of the day, when loaded came calling and they, they assured me, Coach, Coach Antonio Lowe is one of my good friends in the business. And um, when he assured me, like, we're going to take care of Justin, I believed him. Um, and they did great. And he's going to Central, and he's going to kill there. Um, they got a dog. Um, yes, sir. So, so when it comes to, like, the guys that I end up actually having um, on my AAU team, I try to be honest with them about the level that I think they can play. Um, and I deliver it in a way that hopefully they don't take it as hate because – it's, it's tough telling a guy that thinks he's D1 that he's not. Um, and luckily, at this point in my career, I can call on experience. Um, and I can call my guys. I can call Isaiah Reddish that plays at Barton and have him come in a gym and demolish one of my guys and be like, he's a D2 player. You're not a D1 player. Just trust me when he's going to smack you like that. You're just not ready for it. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being told that you'd be a solid D2 player because they're the level, especially at the guard position, the, the difference in talent between guards at D2, D1, it's not that different. Sometimes it's athleticism. Sometimes it's just where you were if you were in the right place at the right time and the right coach saw you. Uh, um, we had point guards um, that we go against all the time at, at um, Conference Carolinas, um, that whole league, especially with Pembroke there now, um, that – you know, they could end up, they could play on any team in the Big South, a lot of the Southern Conference, um, you know, Atlantic Sun, they, the talent level is just not that different. So um, I just tell guys to keep working and I'll, I'll help sell them wherever I can, but I'm going to give them the honest feedback that college coaches give me. Um, you know, there's some that are, that are really good and direct. 
uh, like David Boyden at Radford, Chris Lepore at um, Greensboro, they're going to be bluntly honest with me and be like, man, he's cool, good kid, can't take him. Um, or they're going to let me know, honestly, if, if they can keep if they can keep watching him and they're interested. But I'm going to tell the guys exactly what the college coaches are telling me. It's no good for them to sit there thinking that they're getting recruited by a school when they're not. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, how much, um, you know, what is it like, you know, being on one side, you know, as an AAU coach, then being on the other side as, you know, now, you know, a community college or JUCO coach? Yeah. Um, so, I look forward to when we actually have the AAU season and, and figuring out how I'm going to address those conversations. I don't want to use my AAU team as a funnel to Wake Tech. Um, and so that's kind of the conversation that I had with, with Coach Wainwright at Wake Tech when I was coming in was, you know, I love recruiting. I love helping kids. I'm also incredibly aware of the fact that junior college is no one's final goal when it comes to their basketball career. Um, so I want us to be realistic about that and I told him my goal for our guys is when they come in, I want to develop them. I want to make sure they're getting good grades so they set themselves up for success. If they're going to be with us for two years, I want them to get their associate's degree because that's going to set them up for success beyond basketball. And then I want to be able to focus on calling college coaches, getting them in our gym on a regular basis so they can see the talent we have to get them to four-year universities. Um, I don't I don't want to bring anybody onto my AAU team that their end goal is to play junior college basketball. Um, I want them to want more than that for themselves um now if at the end of the day they don't have anything that's opened up and i think they're good enough to play then yeah i'm gonna you know offer them a spot on the team if we've got any scholarship money left we'll talk and see if they're worth it um but i've i've always said that i don't want anybody on my aau team that i don't think can play at a four-year university and that means d1 d2 d3 na naia ncc aa it's it College basketball is college basketball, and it's going to open up doors for you. Um, and there's competition at every level. Just because you can make the varsity team doesn't mean you can play at a college. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to those conversations. I haven't been able to have them yet, um, but it'll be an interesting, you know, rope to walk and, and see how I can balance that um, going forward. Yeah. All right. Um, so talk to me a little bit about, of course, because uh, were you – did you help out Barton with recruiting as well? Yeah. Um, the, the role of an assistant coach, especially, you know, first year bottom rung assistant coach at a, at a four year university is a lot different from the role I've stepped into at Wake Tech. Um, I didn't have the ability to offer. Um, I, my job was to go out and see high school games um, and begin conversations, build relationships, um, figure out if they're genuinely interested in us, figure out if we have a chance at them, and then figure out if, if they are good enough to play at Barton. Um, and so I started out recruiting some kids that, that I felt, you know, I would have wanted them on my AAU team. The more I watched their games, um, the more I realized I, I don't think D2 is the right level for them. Um, and then it eventually got to the point where I was recruiting. I was pretty much down to like two guys that I was mainly recruiting, got them on campus, um, got one of my guys an offer. Um, and, that was that was a real accomplishment for me, um, where I'd gotten a guy involved enough to where we made an offer, um, and you know, Coach Levency and Coach Zimmerman trusted my judgment on the kid. Um, we didn't end up getting him, um, and he's a he's a good kid, so I don't I don't think there's any issue in me discussing it. Um, Dill Ding um, from High Point Central that he's now going to Tallahassee, and man, he's about to blow up. Um, but you know he. It was, a, it was a great experience recruiting the kid for the first time to college. Um, I'd recruited him trying to get him for AAU, and he played with uh, a combination of Team Felton and Team Phoenix. Um, just a great kid uh, and learning more about him about him and his family. That was, that was a really cool experience for me, um, bringing a kid on the visit for the first time, um, doing his official visit. That was, that was kind of cool to learn that side of things and see how, how we do it as a college staff. Um, so, yeah, I was definitely involved in the recruiting. Um, I would say that I was having to learn a lot and figure out the system and the types of guys that they want to bring in um, culture-wise because some of the guys I started off with weren't right for the Barton culture. They wouldn't have been successful there. Um, so learning that was was tough. Um, but by the end of the first season there, I definitely felt like I understood what was going on. And so I went through that second summer going out to AAU events and, and was able to target some specific guys and um, really start narrowing down my, my idea of the right career for the system quickly, which was cool. All 
Right. You know, from being around there, how do you feel like, you know, colleges uh, make their philosophy on recruiting? Yeah, um, I think every school has a very, very different way of doing things. Um, there are some schools that will throw out, you know, 15 offers for four spots. Um, and then there are some schools that have four spots, but at any given time are only going to have two scholarship offers actually out there um, because they like to, you know, close the deal on, on one of those or let them commit somewhere else before they want to make another offer. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, I think one you get, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You're going to get more guys. Um, but the other one, you might get the right guys. Um, so it, it's, it's all the head coach's philosophy and it, it'll show up in the culture. Um, Barton is one that they are the types that only offer the guys that they would be willing to take a commitment from right away. Um, I think we, you know, it's been talked about on Twitter all the time. There are a lot of offers out there that are not committable. Um, they may have offered you back in October and they would have taken that commitment, you know, for the next two weeks, but now they found someone else that they like more and they're, they've offered them and they're waiting on them. That offer that you got back in October is probably no longer good. Um, so that's something that you need to be paying attention to. If you got, if you got the offer, but you haven't heard from the team in the last week or two, you may want to reach out to them and see what's going on. Um, especially as we get to May, um, if there's any 2020 class guys that are out there that are, that end up listening to this, my message to you would be, if there's anybody that made an offer, you might want to check if it's committable, and then you should go ahead and commit. If you're out there and you haven't committed to a school and you're in the class of 2020, the spots are going away quickly. With this transfer portal, it's insane. Um, so that's that's kind of my message. I, I think I went off the rails on that one, but, uh, you know. No, it's, no, no, please. Uh, please sorry, man. I, I just got so many thoughts. I told you all when I tweeted, man, I just want to talk to people. We've been stuck inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's why we're so happy to have you on, man. This is this is the show to do it right here. <laughs> For sure. All right. um, so the thing about it is when, uh, you know, I always see people talk about committable versus non-committable. Um, what is it like trying – what was it like as a coaching staff or have you ever had experience to where somebody might call and say, hey, you know, I've decided to go ahead and commit to this offer, and you had to say, well – that offer was valid two months ago. It's not right. valid now. So I, I haven't been in a situation where I had a kid trying to full out commit, um, but I've had one where we were recruiting a kid really hard, um, and then we kind of lost interest. Um, and they reached out and were like, "Hey, coach, just want to see if y'all are still recruiting me." And that's where I had to kind of let them know we moved in a different direction. Um, and I will tell you, for me, it was excuse me, it was that experience that led me to where I am now, where I'm bluntly honest with the kid that if I have moved in a different direction, I don't ghost them. I don't just stop texting. I'll reach out to them and say, hey, for the time being, we are moving in a different direction. I want you to know I still like your game. If there's anything I can do to help you, I will. But right now, you know, speaking two years ago, right now, Barton is not uh, actively recruiting you or that's for today. Right now, Wake Tech is not actively recruiting you. Um, but I'll let you know if that changes and I hope that you can appreciate the honesty rather than feeling bitter about it. Um, and most players have been open to that and, and appreciate that. Um, I've had a couple that were just kind of like, you know, what the heck better than that guy that, that I saw got an offer or something like that. And, you know, that's fine. If that's how they feel. That's how they feel. Um, but I, at the end of the day, still rather be honest than out there letting them wonder what's going on. Right. Um, you know, so what is it, you know, what is it kind of like, you know, a lot of people call it the cat and mouse game uh, of college recruitment. What is it like, you know, trying to play that and trying to understand and what, what kind of advice could you offer, you know, uh, uh, high school basketball players on trying to understand that from their point of view? Honestly, um, I mean, if you're not interested in a school, don't keep them around just so that you can collect an offer and post it on social media. Um, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do the school any good. If you know that you're never going to commit there, don't take that offer. Don't, don't, don't let them continue to recruit, recruit you. That's, that's wasting their time. That, you know, especially at the, the junior college D2 level, um, D3, we don't get paid enough to be chasing around guys that know that they're not going to be committing. 
Um, I'd like to believe that, that I've built a strong enough relationship with players early um, that they would be honest with me if they weren't interested. Um, I, and I've had guys tell me that, you know, coach, I appreciate the interest, but I'm going to go in a different direction or I've narrowed it down to other schools. Um, it's nice to find out that way instead of these guys posting their top 16, which is stupid, by the way. Don't do that. Um, the top 16, um, and then you don't see your logo on there. Um, that's that's one way to find out that you're not, you know, in the running anymore. Um, be honest. Ask a lot of questions. Um, they need to do their research and find out what they want to do. Figure out what the what major they want to have. Make sure that the school offers that. Um, make sure that there's playing time for you because let's be honest, every guy, every player out there wants to go play. Um, and if if it's clear that you're not going to play, but that's the dream school for you, like that's that's a scenario that I've that I've run into. Don't be afraid to ask if you could redshirt. Um, save that year of eligibility. Um, still get to practice with the team, still get to work out, and maybe you get end up getting five years of your education paid for and work a year towards your master's. Um, make the scholarship work for you. Um, that's that's a really important thing to to look into, especially if you're one of these. You know, Nate Springs, for example, um, he went to Ohio. He was six ten and one hundred sixty pounds soaking wet. Um, you know, I'm five nine and I weighed more than him, which was depressing for me. Um, so I was like. <laughs> I was like, you know, he took he took that red shirt, red shirt year and he took advantage of it. Um, and you know, he he's gonna when it's all said and done, if he doesn't leave to go to the NBA a year early, which he now can do and still have his degree, um, if he stays for the full five years of college that the scholarship is going to pay for at this point, he can be halfway to a master's if not already get it um, with just a couple summer classes. Um, but yeah, just be honest with the coaches. Let them know what you want. Ask the question to get the answers that you need. Um, and if if there's a, like, like we just bought a house. So for us, we, we needed specific things. One of the, one of the very simple ones was we wanted a big kitchen with an Island. If we walked into a house and it didn't have an Island in the kitchen, I know wifey's not going to be happy. We turn it off. We tell her, we tell our realtor, we appreciate your time, but we're not interested in this house. If your must have in the university is that you're going to be, you know, playing as a freshman and they tell you you've got two two juniors or a senior and a junior ahead of you on the roster in that position you need to be okay walking away um and and figure it out from there don't don't go somewhere and commit to a school where you're not going to be happy because you're going to be miserable you're going to bring down the culture there um and you're not going to be able to play that's where junior college comes in that's where you just continue working out and playing to to see what other options come open, but you need to be honest with yourself so that you can enjoy the college experience when you get there. Speaking of junior college, I want to trans transition to your recruiting class for Wake Tech this year. Yep. Uh, we do, of course, Kai and I, and most people know who will be coming to Wake Tech, but just break down uh, who is already like in your 2020 class. Yeah, so I want to make sure I only talk about the guys I'm allowed to talk about. Um, yes, so that's the exactly what I mean. Yes, sir. Um, I'll, I'll talk through a couple of the guys that I had a hand in, in recruiting um, recently. Uh, Kobe Jones coming from South Granville. Um, I think everyone has probably seen one of his highlights. Uh, he is a, he is a highlight. <laughs> yeah, he's a human highlight reel. He's a human hogo stick. Like he can jump out of the gym. Um, I'm really excited to put together film for him at Wake Tech where he shows that he can do a lot more than that. Um, he is, he is a defensive stopper. Um, he rebounds at an incredible rate for his position. Um, we're going to work hard to add some weight to him, um, give him a little bit more muscle mass, um, give him a couple go-to moves with a counter, um, and then continue to improve the jump shot. But if you were someone that watched Kobe as a junior and then watched him as a senior, if you see the improvement in just that one year, the sky's the limit for the kid if he, when he continues to work that hard, because I know he's going to, um, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of success with him um, at the, the two, three uh, area on the wing. Um, but I'm excited to, to let him get loose a little bit um, and show that he can compete against the top guys in, in region 10. Um, Josh Searcy, uh, six, six wing. Um, he was a highly touted baseball player coming out of high school. 
Um, he went and played baseball at Catawba Valley Community College right out of, right out of high school from East Rutherford. Um, he was on the team that went, I think it was like 30 and one. They lost in the state semifinal his senior year. Uh, but he's a lights out shooter. Um, he can play the two through four um, in our league. He's really versatile. Um, you know, he had taken, he's taken a year off um, this past year and been working, um, helping his parents out. Uh, but he, he told me, and he's one that played AAU for me. Um, and I've stayed in contact with him and we were just like, dude, you want to get back in the basketball game? That, that it was his first love. Um, and, and I feel confident that he's going to come in and, and show some, some D1 coaches that that's where he belongs. Um, so he's going to do a lot, a lot for us this year. He's so versatile. We can play him just about anywhere. He can bring the ball to the floor. Um, and, and be just fine. Um, he's got really good post moves, so he, he's going to be he's going to be a threat um, from anywhere on the floor. I'm excited about Josh. Um, let's see here, Jimmy Forte, uh, bucket, just bucket. That's my guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that was Coach Bakes' uh, recruitment. I, I had recruited Jimmy a little bit when I was at Barton, um, and then switched over here. Uh, before any offer was made over there, um, but in my mind, he's a no doubt scholarship level. Um, four-year player, uh, and so we'll we'll keep him for a year, maybe two, and, and bounce him out there. He's going to make somebody really happy. Um, I think an unfair an unfair judgment against him was the competition he was going against just wasn't strong enough for people to determine if he could do that at the next level. Um, but I never saw him. You know, I was at the Fab Forty. I, I he, he performed there. And there's some other. Yeah, there, there's guys that were at the Fab Forty. Um, shout out to Clark uh, that were. You know, they're going D two, and he was getting buckets on them. Like I, I, I think there's no doubt that Jimmy's a four year player, um, and I'm excited for him to to play for us, and I'm excited to coach him because he's a competitor. Um, he's already got a college level frame. Um, dude's built like a tank. Um, let's see here. I don't want to talk about anybody else because I'm not sure uh, everybody that I'm allowed to. But uh, you know, maybe we'll get Coach Bake on on with you guys at some point. Of course, we, I want to. I definitely want to have Coach Baker on. I'm sure Kai would agree. Uh, of course, oh, yeah. he does a great job with the uh, Triangle Challenge. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Of course, y'all got uh, y'all got the big guy from down here, uh, Devin Brown, coming y'all yep. as well. Yep. Okay. You you mentioned him. That guy, Devin. He's a great player. Um, gonna gonna dominate in the post. Um, man, I tried really hard to get him in AAU a couple of years ago, and it's nice that I get to coach him now in college. But. Um, <laughs> And he's he's such a team guy, man. He's already been reaching out, trying to figure out everybody that's coming in, get their contact information. Like he's he's already trying to, to build camaraderie and get that chemistry going. So he's he's going to be a stud. Yeah, man. He he he's definitely was kind of a, that late bloomer, I think, because mm-hmm. it, it really seemed to click for him this year. Yeah, um, highly skilled. Like you, you wouldn't immediately assume that he's going to be a high, highly skilled guy with footwork like that for his size, but he's got it. Right. Um, you know, so one of the things, too, that I wanted to ask you about, I don't think I've ever, you know, we've ever talked about this. Um, from a recruiting standpoint, what is it like dealing with the high school coaches? And what are some traits of the good high school coaches that you enjoy recruiting their kids versus the bad ones who you don't enjoy recruiting their kids? You ain't got to say no names. Or anything, no, I won't, I won't give any names. There's really not many on, on my on my bad list. Um, and that's that's a good thing. You're on my bad list if you just don't answer email or text. Like the the number of coaches I've I've simply sent an email to and said, "Hey, I would just love to get some full game film on this guy." And the fact that it just I never get a response. I end up having to text the player and be like, "Hey, I emailed your coach. Will you try to get them to send film to me?" And then you know, a week later, I get a, a text from the player with you know the the file um, in the text. So I got to watch it on my little phone like that. But um, yeah, just respond. You know, I don't. I don't expect every college coach to be like an Antonio Lowe um, at one of the prep schools, or you know, there's tons of great um, public school coaches as well that are that are teachers first. Um, just respond. Mill, Millbrook's got it locked up, man. Millbrook um, in our area does an amazing job with their social media. Um, coach Davis, you know, talked about. Evan West does an excellent job. He does a yeah. really good job. Man. Yeah, they do a great job getting their players out there. Um, and, you know, I feel like every player that wants to play college ball from Millbrook is going to play college ball because they promote their players, they respond to coaches, um, they play in the right events. Um, you know, they need 
you should play in at least one tournament that's not in your zip code. Like, I'm not even going to say out of your area code, but at least not in your zip code. Um, get out there, be seen by other by other teams, by other um, college coaches. Um, go where college coaches are going to be. But yeah, for, for the junior college and D2 level, the most important thing is just having a high school coach that's going to respond to email and phone calls. Just call me back, email me back. That's all I really ask. It's not it's not much. And like I said, there's not many that are on my bad list. They just had a, I'm sorry, Kai. Uh, Milbert just had a Adam Carey commit to Fayetteville Tech today. So that was a, that's another one for Region 10. Yeah. Region, speaking of, uh, Region 10 ball, just as a whole, how good is Region 10 junior college basketball? Um, I knew about it, and I wasn't even in it last year. Um, I went to a couple games to recruit guys um, from Barton. Um, I went to a couple as a fan. Um, you know, Jamarius Harrison, like I mentioned, got player of the year in the conference last year, was first-team All-American. Um, he's going to go kill for Lise McRae. Um, but, yeah, he's – he's and he's definitely going to be part of that dunk. Um, but, uh, no, Region 10 is going to be strong, man. I'm – I'm excited. We were talking about it in our group text last night. Like every game is going to be a fight um, in the league this year. There's, there's no, there's no easy games. There's no nights off. Um, and I'm excited for it. it. You know, better competition on every team is going to bring out more college coaches. Um, you're, you know, if there was a cupcake game last year, which I don't think there was still, but I know the competition is even better this year. You know, any game that Wake Tech's playing, I expect college coaches to be in the gym and be interested in the matchups. Right. Um, you know, for you, what – how – you talk about the showcases. How yeah. important are those showcases to, you know, college coaches when it comes to recruiting? It's – I mean, you look at the AAU tournament. You've got a ton of talent in the gym. Um, it's hard to make the wrong decision, but there's typically a right decision on which tournaments to be at. Um and same thing goes for the showcases, the Christmas tournaments. Um, Christmas tournaments are a great time for college coaches to be able to get out. There's typically not a ton of games or practices that they've got to be responsible for on campus. Um, so finding a tournament where there's going to be high enough competition that college coaches will be interested in not just your players, but other players. Um, for example, I'm not going to go to, you know, mom and pop corner of North Carolina because there's one player that's going to be that tournament that I want to recruit it's not worth my time it's not worth my gas it's not worth my money to travel four hours to see one player when i could travel you know any amount of time and see four or five players that i'm interested in you got to go where it makes the most sense to spend the most of your time um now if there's a guy that we've offered at that four hour away tournament and he's the one we need to lock in you best believe i'm driving four hours to go see that player play um but it just makes much more sense to go where there's a larger pool of talent that is in your wheelhouse. Um, and so identifying what level is recruiting you and then starting to find the other teams that have players that are at that level. Um, so as the high school coach, you know, John Wall, Holiday Invitational is a big one for high majors. If I don't have anybody that is going to be playing high major, if I've got a bunch of like really good D2 players, I'm looking at the um, South Granville Christmas tournament because there's typically a ton of D2 level players there. And I went there as a Barton coach and there were three or four other D2 coaches there um, versus going to the John Wall where, you know, it's ACC, a couple SECs, and then, you know, some low majors in there. It's great. And it, it feels really cool to play in front of Kevin Keats and Roy Williams and coach K. Um, but that's not going to do me any good. I'm, I'm not going high major. I'm going to, you know, if I'm going to be the D2 guy. I want to go playing for the D2 coaches. Awesome. All right. So, I mean, when you look at um, also, too, when it comes to you talk about, you know, the key guy, um, what are some things that colleges can do to try to convince key guys, you know, that one guy that you really need, that you're your big key right there in the middle of your puzzle piece. How do you kind of convince them? What are some, like, some, some tricks and methods that colleges do? Are you trying to get me to help my competition out? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, you know, we've reached the part of the show, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, and, and this goes for AAU. This goes for any level of college. Be genuine. Be honest. 
um, build a build a real relationship with the kid. Um, and then I think we've seen with the with the transfer portal, um, you got to continue to recruit them even once you've got them. Um, once they're on campus, being able to see past your starting five and your top eight players to the end of the roster, those are going to be guys that are making an impact for you a year or two down the road. But if you don't continue to recruit them, they're not going to be there to run your team in two years. Um, so building that relationship, maintaining that relationship, and just being honest from day one um, is, is kind of what I what I do and what I intend to continue doing. Um, Coach, have you had any uh, funny or embarrassing moments on the sideline before, or what are some what are some ones that uh, that you can remember? <laughs> oh man. Um, so first, I'm gonna throw my man Donovan Perry under the bus. Uh, he is he is um, the head coach for the 16U team this year for the Wolves. He was he was coaching the 17U team um, when we had Taji and all them. Um, we were in Atlanta or Augusta um, playing at the Icebreaker and um, yeah. in the Convention Center. I, I'm not gonna call the player out, but one of our players called a timeout when we didn't have a timeout left. And Donovan turns around and kicks a chair, and it flies over the bench that's directly behind us onto the court of that game. And somehow he didn't get a technical. The, the ref didn't see it. Uh, Taji ran over to the other court, grabbed the chair, brought it back, and said, hey, coach, you lost this. Um, so that was funny. Um, <laughs> man, I don't want to pretend like I haven't done anything stupid, but I don't know that I've ever been embarrassed on the sideline. Um I, mean, it's I don't know, man. Don't have one. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm, That's still I'm sure I've done something. And, and, you know, hey, if any of my players watch this, put in the comments below, right? After you subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, so we we would appreciate it, of course. But um, I, it, it's okay if you didn't have – that story was good enough. <laughs> that story was perfect. <laughs> but – um. Uh, in terms of uh, what what have you been doing to contact some players you've coached in terms of getting them to train and be prepared and continue to work out through this whole COVID-19 pandemic? I mean, it's just been constant communication, asking them what they're working on, um, asking if they need anything in order to be successful. Um, I'm lucky enough to have the connection at the YMCA, so if I needed to go and get some equipment to borrow for them, I'm able to do that. Um, you know, we can't put the, we can't get them inside in any gym right now. That's not allowed. Um, but helping them identify, I think in the next week or two, uh, the governor said we're going to be able to open parks. So find outdoor courts for them to go play on and, and get workouts in. Um, it's going to be it's going to be key. But for the guys that I've mentioned, like Kobe and, and Josh, for them, they're really working on their bodies. Um, Josh getting back in basketball shape and Kobe just trying to put on a little bit of muscle right now. Um but you can always work on ball handling. All you need is a ball. Um, so that's that's kind of what I'm asking them asking them to focus on their their fitness and their ball handling. And if they can find a goal, great, get some shots up. Um, but this I've, I've said it before, and, I, and I've had conversations with some of my AAU um, players and, and just some of the parents I keep in contact with. This time is really going to show who's been working. Um, it's people are going to come out of this as different types and different players. And that can be for the good or the bad. Um, so I'm excited to see it. Right. Um, now, of course, one thing I do have to ask you is for guys who are, you know, 2022, 2023, 2024, you know, even, even on down, what are some good steps to take towards um, getting your recruitment started, you know, this, this early, you know, cause I have a lot of parents yeah. who I have, now, what are some things that we can be doing? Yeah, um, the the tough thing I would say first is worry less about your recruitment and worry more about your development. Um, especially, you know, you mentioned all the way down to 20, 24, 25, anything like that. Don't worry about it when, until you're at least at the earliest of sophomore in high school. Um, if, if you're not already on a high majors radar, sophomore year in high school is a good time to start even – remotely considering worrying about um, being recruited. Uh, D2s aren't worrying about anybody in the 2022 class even right now. Um, the vast majority of them are finishing up 2020 and starting to work on 21. 
22s are, you know, at the edge of their mind, 23s, they haven't even looked at the names. Um, and that the higher up you go, the farther out they're recruiting, um, for sure. But like I mentioned, if, if you're not already ranked nationally or if you're not already getting letters in the mail or anything like that, you're not allowed to get phone calls until you're a rising junior. But, um, you know, it's, it's don't, don't worry about it. Worry about your development. Work on your body. Work on your game. That's, that's first and foremost. Um, once it does come time, so I'm saying your sophomore year into your rising junior summer, um, that's where you need to start worrying about what AAU team you're playing for. Um, you need to, and I'm not saying that the shoe teams are always the right fit. We, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, and I, and if you want, if you ever want to ask, and this is to any player, whether I'm recruiting you or not, send me your film, send me your interest. If you're if you're going to go D1, if if D1 is a lock for you, mid major, high major, yeah, go play for a shoe team. And if you're that good, you've probably gotten calls. Um, if it's an open tryout, aka pay twenty five dollars, um, you and you're going without being invited to it, that's probably not the team for you. Um, and before I get slandered for that, it's perfectly fine to pay twenty five dollars or charge twenty five dollars for a tryout when you're a CP three team fell on Garner Road. And, and I've seen it discussed on Twitter. They have to do that so that they don't have 500 kids show up to their tryouts. There's that level of interest. You've got to charge something. And I don't blame them one bit. They've got to rent out the facility or Garner Road's situation. They own the facility. you got to pay the mortgage and all that. Uh, you know, that's something that's right for them to do. However, if you haven't even been invited and you're just going because you saw it on Twitter and you're paying the $25, chances are you are not a priority for them. That's probably not the right move for you. Um, so let's move past the shoe guys. Cause I feel like they're a different, a different level. Those rising juniors that are looking to start, get their recruitment started. You need to go play for an AAU team that has a track record of putting guys in college. Don't go to those teams that are advertising their USBA, USSSA national championships. And that's what they hang their hat on. That's not an accomplishment. I'm sorry. That's not what AAU is about. Um, that's what rec ball was about in middle school. And you know what? Middle school national champions, that's cool. Winning that in 11th and 12th grade doesn't mean anything. Um, me and uh, Sim Frazier, that's now got Team Curry, we're, yep. we have this conversation all the time back when he was PSB. Um, there's some really, really good non-sponsored teams out there. you got to find them. There's also a lot of teams out there um, that I don't think are doing it for the best interest of the kids. They are holding on to their kids with, you know, an iron grip to not let them go to these shoe teams where they'd be able to blow up. I don't, I don't know why, but they're doing that. Um, so find a team that's got a record putting kids in college. And what I always do is I have my guys that I have helped put in college and I'm not doing that work. I'm initiating the conversation. It's on them to get the offer once they've been introduced. I want to make sure that's clear. The kids do the work. We just make the connection. Um, I've had some of my old guys talk to players that I'm recruiting, like, Hey, you play a similar position. I feel like you guys are similar skill set. Talk to them about your experience playing for me and what I did to help you where I can get better and things like that. And they'll, they'll be honest with them. Um, and I don't always get those kids and that's perfectly fine. Um, from an AAU side, I would say if a kid is better, if, if you need the kid more than the kid needs you, it's time for him to go to a different program. Um, if, if you need to hold on to him because he's going to put your program on the map, it's time for you to let him go play somewhere where they've already got that connection. If you're asking on Twitter for coaches' contacts, if you're if you don't already know what you're doing, you get a kid there and you've got a kid that is a surefire D1, let him go somewhere where he's going to flourish and have plenty of opportunities and options to choose from. Don't let him stick around with with you and you hold him back the kid's going to appreciate you more for letting him go and flourish keep that keep that relationship it, it's always going to be there um but i just think that from an aau standpoint we got to start truly doing what's best for the kids um and and I, I i didn't always do that um when i first started i was much more concerned with you know who are the ballers we got on this team man like like check check out who we got look who i recruited this kid was getting recruited by x y and z sponsored team but i got him check me out um but I, I've come out of that and now it's a lot more like I got this kid to XYZ D2. This kid's going to go start probably for all four years of this D3. He's got a uh, you know, half-ride um, academic scholarship because he's a great student. 
um, it, it's changed a lot for me. Um, but for those parents, sorry to bring it all the way back. The parents that are asking those questions, get your kid in the clearinghouse. Um, first and foremost, that allows us to figure out transcripts and grades, um, upload film, but full game film. Highlights are okay, but we prefer full game film. You can post your highlights on Twitter. You can email them to coaches. Our emails are all on our websites. Just blast it out. Have a very nice and professionally written introduction. Um, but then have full game film ready for us to watch. Um, because if the highlights get us interested, the full game film is going to let us see all of it. We, we want to see defense. We want to see what they do if they're on the bench. Um, we want to see how they're cheering for their, are they a good teammate or how do they react when they get taken out of a game? Um, I want to see it all. Um, so have the film ready. Film definitely helps. And then find the right AAU team. Um, find someone that you trust, uh, that has those connections and just keep developing. Um, North Carolina is, is very lucky. We've got people covering it from the beach to the mountains, um, that are well connected, that are going to get you out there if you're a good player. Um, it's not to say that you don't have to do some work for yourself um, and be, be able to self promote and, and be in the right positions. Um, but we've got we've got people all over the place that are doing a really good job in our state getting kids out there. Um, you guys included. Uh, so I think they're in a good position. So first and foremost is the development, and then worrying about making good decisions and having people around you that you trust. I, was, I I think we can end the episode on that because I mean it's, <laughs> that was a straight education. I mean, all of that was on the money. I mean, I I've always I appreciate that. I've, I've always tried to implore kids to also do don't don't be worried if a Division One is not recruiting you. There are other schools that want you and go where you fit and where you are wanted to to contribute and help a program build. You know. And mm-hmm. their whole, and, and de- but of course it does depend on the situation too. But yeah. I, I feel as if Retro just gave us the whole ed- education. We don't need to say anymore, God. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing I do want to ask you: you talk about 2021s. Um, you talk about a good, in, in, a good professional introduction. What does that include? Um, make sure you say your name. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean. Th- it would be nice to know. <laughs> like, like, I mean, <laughs> so social media, let's start with social media and then I'll talk to the email. Social media. I don't know if y'all realize this, but we can see what you like. So don't go out there liking inappropriate videos and, and well, I'll stop there. Don't like things under social media that you wouldn't want the college groups to see. Don't retweet things with a ton of vulgarity in it. We understand that y'all cuss. It's okay. Some of us cuss too. Um, that's fine, but keep it to a minimum. Um, your social media, your, your app and the name in your social media profile should say your actual name. Um, it would help if in your profile, it said class of insert your class and then what school you attend. Um, that helps us find you on social media. Um, that helps a lot. Um, and then post inappropriate things. Make it all about basketball. I told a lot of guys that if they didn't have a Twitter page, to create one and then make it nothing but basketball. Um, don't give a college coach any any reason to think that you're not serious about the game or anything else. Uh, you don't have to have social media. A lot of guys are successful without it. But if you do have it, it needs to be professional, appropriate, and your name needs to be on there. Um, email. If you're going to start off, um, start off with, Hey coach, insert last name. So, hey coach Rex Road. Um, my name is so and so. I am a insert position if you have one. Um, would love your height in there, maybe. You know, I am a six foot point guard in the 2021 class at Eastern Guilford High School. Um, I'm emailing you because I'd love to learn more about your program, or I'm interested in your program. Um, anything like that and wanted to send you some film so that you would have the opportunity to review it and give me your feedback. Um, Attach our highlights below. If you would like full game film, I can provide that for you, but would love to hear your feedback on what I've sent. Thank you. Have a great day. Insert name here.
Um, if you send it short, quick, professional like that, I am 100% watching your highlights and I will 100% respond to you and I'll give you my honest feedback. Now, when you send that and they give you feedback, positive or negative, thank them for the feedback because you never know where that coach is going to end up. If I was recruiting you, so for example, I was at Barton. Maybe I couldn't recruit you to Barton because of grades, but you definitely have the talent. I'm now at Wake Tech. Guess what? I can recruit you. But if you were rude to me, didn't respond to me, you know, were inappropriate or anything like that, I'm not recruiting you at my new position. The number of guys that are high major assistants that end up becoming heads at low major and mid major, you went after them because you wanted to go high major. They didn't, they responded, you didn't like their response and didn't give them the appropriate response. Guess what? They're not recruiting you now that they're at low major, but you could have gone to one and now you're not going to. Um, you never know where people are going to end up. You should treat everyone kindly all the time, but exactly. maybe treat them kindly because of what they could do for you in the future. And there's no right. bigger, or I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I, was, no, I have one more question here. Now, from okay. the standpoint of guys like me, guys like Leica, who put together highlights for kids to send, what it, what do you want to see as a college coach in your highlights? And then what are some things that you've seen that you would very much not like to see now? That's a good um, So first, from the perspective, so y'all, um, Bucket Reel, uh, Phenom, um, Hoop State, uh, Hoop Farm, you know, there's tons of great guys in our, in our area um, that do great work. Um, so the first thing I want to say, the first thing I want to say is, Parents, don't ask these dudes to come out and film your kid and put together a mix for free. They're driving. They need gas money at the very least. Pay these guys because they're doing you a service. Let me start there. Um, beyond that, in the video, what we like to see, um, don't show me. I don't want to see the dude taken off for the dunk from outside the lane and then you cut it before the dunk happens because I know he missed that dunk. Um <laughs> I want to see all aspects of the game. Um, I, I personally am not someone that minds if it's you know got music in it that's got that's got cursing and stuff. I, I know that there's a lot of coaches that do feel like they they don't want to hear that. Um, if it's music I like and I listen to, I'm not going to be paying attention to the words. I'm watching basketball more than I'm listening to the words. Um, but it's always safe to go instrumental or clean version. Um, I want to see all aspects of the game. I would love to see some defensive highlights um, if you have them. If you don't, don't put it in there and try to make it look impressive. Um, but you got it. The very beginning, the first play or two has to be the most exciting clip that you have because um, it's got to grip me. If you're if you're a three point shooter, man, let me see the, the longest distance three, the craziest dribble move into a three that you've got to get me gripped. Even if that's not what you do on a consistent basis, even if it's not a great shot, if you make it and it goes in and it's kind of an impressive play, I'm hooked. Let's keep watching. Let's see what's happening. Um, so I'd say just make it make it exciting from the beginning and, and carry it through. Or pay these dudes that are helping you get recruited, especially if you're asking them to come out there. If y'all just go out there and record a game because you were bored on a Thursday night and, and you decide to put a mix together, that's cool. That's on y'all. But if there's parents, and I'm sure y'all have a ton of people in your DMs and emails and saying, hey, man, can you come out to this game? I need some film. Say, that's great. What are you doing for me? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I was going to go back before. That was a great question, Kai. I was going to go back and talk about how coaches uh, go could end up as a low major assi uh, head coach from being like a high major assistant. I mm -hmm. mean, Takayo Siddle at UNCW is like the biggest example of that. There are a lot of kids that he he watched with Coach Keats. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, he gets the job at UNCW. Now he's recruiting all those kids to UNCW. And yep. he's he's going all out trying to get some of these kids. So you never know. You got – you. I agree with you on that, Coach. Uh, you always got to know – always always talk – always remember who you see because they're going to be – they're going to be eyeing you if they get the opportunity. So, for sure, absolutely. But uh, Kai, you got anything else? Uh, no, I, I think that's it, man. I think that was a the really good episode, Coach. 
Appreciate you coming on and talking with us, man. Dropping some good signs for kids. Anytime, man. I really appreciate what y'all are doing. Um, and, and hopefully I'll see y'all out on the road whenever this uh, corona is over. We can get some seasons going. Come down to Wake Tech, man. Uh, we need some film. I might be able to throw you some gas money. Yes, hey. <laughs> you know, you got, you got my guy Devin. Uh, you got Jimmy Forte, man. I'm definitely coming you down. You got the strong cheese from North Lenore. That's my guy. Come on down, oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's going to yeah. be a show. Um, Coach, where can they find you on social media? Uh, everything's at coach um, underscore Rex, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I don't really do much else. I'm, I'm on Twitter. That's that's where I am. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, Kai, you know, of course, you guys know where to find Kai and myself. Uh, WJG Sports is on all social media platforms as well. Uh, if you're on Anchor listening to us, thank you for listening. Uh, you, Like I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, our YouTube channel, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers by hopefully the end of the month. So uh, continue to hit that subscribe button, hit the post notification bell, and uh, continue to keep it locked. We got more mixtapes coming too, so we'll, we be on the lookout. We got more films. So, Kai, forty nine episodes. Could you? Would you believe it, man? <laughs> yep, yep. Next one is fifty. That's the big one. Yes, sir. So thank you, everybody. Coach Rex, thank you again. And uh, we will see you again soon. Peace. Appreciate it. See you guys.